let me know the time. One hour, half an hour, one hour, hour and forty five, hour and a half. Just let me know the time. Okay, go for two hours. Thank you very much. Actually, I didn't um, uh, prepare the lecture until a few minutes ago. I sat down and decided what I'm going to be talking about because all day and all night I've been thinking what I'm going to tell them exactly because I have extensive knowledge in nutrition and disease both and uh, 15,000 patients behind my back experience treating over the years and uh, and then I, when I try to give a lecture, I try to capsulate it in an hour and a half, just to get the, get the message across. I just don't want not to try to on and on and on without a message. And the message tonight always is the role of nutrition in disease. But in the meantime, if you don't know the basic behind a disease, then you really don't know how to treat a disease. And the, the basic behind diseases it has been ignored by physicians. Uh, everybody treating symptoms. If you have a headache, you treat the headache. If you have a uh, pain in the joint, you treat the pain in the joint. If you have a stomach ache, you treat the stomach ache. But the cause of the problem is what I concentrate on. People who come to my office know that very well. You could have the most complex symptoms and when I get to the root of the problem, I find it very, very simple. Very simple. You can have a very simple symptom. When I get to the root of it, I find it to be a very serious disease or behind that symptom. So unless you get to that, then we're going to keep going from doctor to doctor, hospital to hospital, complaining and reading books and following this and this and getting nowhere. The reason I have tremendous success with my patients in uh, 15,000 patients we had over the years, nobody died from cancer or heart disease, nobody in 15 years who followed directions. I tell them exactly what to do. When they don't follow, they come back with problems. But it's basic. Disease is there. It develops in subclinical stage. It develops in your body for years before you have symptoms. You don't want to wait until you have a symptom. It's too late when you have symptoms. Many times it's too late. You say, I feel fine. You're not feeling fine. If you're getting old, you're not feeling fine. It means something is going wrong. And some people have more problems than others. I, I divided tonight's lecture to two lectures. I could not cover all the information in one lecture. Uh, we're going to give today lecture on some of the problems and continuation it will be in November and the rest of the problem. Are you following me or not? Because I thought about it, should I follow exactly what we have advertised and go and say, okay, osteoporosis and satisfy everybody, or should I do a really good job on what I want to talk about, and then uh, if somebody has a question about their problem I didn't cover, I can answer it until we get to November and I go through it thoroughly. You follow me? That's what I decide to do anyway, so you're not going to change that. <laughs> so, uh, the, 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 what I have thought about, I looked at my practice. I looked at 15 years I have in my practice, 15,000 patients. I find out basically the problems we have relate to three things, the causes of the problem, either nutritional problem, stress-related problem, or exposure to chemicals, too many chemicals around the home or around work or something like that. There are problems related to hereditary, and those are very rare. If your father had cancer, you don't have to have cancer. If your father had diabetes, you don't have to have diabetes. If your mother has breast cancer, you don't have to have breast cancer, because I proved this theory wrong in my practice. None of my patients with family history develop the same history when they took care of themselves. This means if we start blaming everything in our parents, we never move forward. You understand? 
if everything you develop first of the breast to ask the doctor, why did I develop it? Says your, your mother gave it to you. Or I have arthritis, your mother gave it to you. Or I have diabetes, your father gave it to you. Well, if we have that attitude, we know the answer. There is no reason to do research to move forward then. There is no provision, there is no hope. And I find that's not true. There is hope for everybody to help and or cure every disease. There is hope. We have proved it on our, in all the medical literature. The hopeless diseases, we've seen miracles all of a sudden. So today, I'm going to cover some of these things. First of all, let me see the, the lecture uh, brochure. Do you have one, in the fly, one of those flies? I just want to know which of those diseases I'm going to cover tonight. <laughs> yeah, thank you. <laughs> okay. We will cover tonight rheumatoid arthritis and lupus, and I will answer some questions regarding to osteoarthritis, osteoporosis, and gout. Osteoporosis and osteoarthritis and gout will be covered very thoroughly in November and very slightly today. And I will, in the lecture. Yeah, yeah, we'll be in the same place. And I will do something else, to be fair, because you came in, you have osteoporosis, you have osteoporosis, that's what you came for. I will give you my number in my office, and I will give you free consultation over the phone to answer your question, if you have a question in the end. So, you have your own private lecture. <laughs> so, that is what I'm going to do. But we're going to cover a lot more than this problem here. I find out, if we, if we study our body, we find the human body is made from units called cells. Human body made from organs, like this is the bone right here, and the bone covered with the skin, like this, and the skin is made from cells, and the bone made from cells. And also, Inside the body, we find organs, many organs. One here, that's the brain. We have the lungs right here. We have the stomach, the intestine right here. We have the liver here, the pancreas, the kidneys, all kinds of organs inside the body. They all share one thing. They made of cells. To function properly, they have to receive nutrients. They have to receive nutrients. And the way it receives the nutrients is through the mouth or the end of the lung, you receive the protein, the carbohydrate, the fat, the vitamins, the water, and the mineral, and the oxygen, and the fibers, all of these things. Those nutrients has to be digested and absorbed and detoxified. Are you following the, the route I'm taking? And send it to where? To the heart. Where the heart has to take it and send it where? All over the body again. And the cycle continues. And if we, under, if we go to the cell and understand how the cell gets sick and how every part of the body gets sick, it's the basic cell gets sick. And that is the same topic I lectured 25 years ago. 24 years ago I said this is the basic cause of disease before I was a medical doctor or in terms of cardiology. And until today, 24 years later, I said the same thing. This is the basic cause of the disease. 24 years ago I wasn't sure. It was my theory. After many years of practice, I am sure that is the cause of most of the diseases caused by that. So, the problems right here can occur in the food you eat, that you're not getting the right protein, the right carbohydrate, the right fat, the right vitamins, the right kind of water, the right minerals, and enough oxygen, enough fibers. Follow the route of your problems. Number two, it can be in the digestion. You eat in the proper food, but you're not digesting it properly. 
because you have stress. When you have a stress, your stomach is not settled, then you don't digest properly, correct or no? When you're under stress, your stomach doesn't digest properly. You have too much acid, you have too much heartburn, and then you're not going to digest the food if you have a problem that comes out the way it came in. And number three, uh, you might, number three right here, you might digest it, but you're not going to absorb it properly until you have the proper intestinal structure or motility. You heard about irritable bowel disease. That you eat something upset your stomach. Do you think you're going to absorb food when your bowel is irritable? How many of us do you think in the society have something wrong in their bowel? Digestion or absorption? I'm talking about the people who are stressed. All of us. Working and have responsibility. How many? 100%. So, we have problems here we have to discuss today also and correct. And then the detoxification problem number four. You could have chemicals in that food. If the liver doesn't get rid of it, you pollute in the blood and intoxicate in the body. And then we go to the heart. The heart is cells made of cells. And the heart will suffer through the process also if things are not going right. Then the arteries that carry the blood, they can get plugged or can get a spasm and they don't deliver the food to the cell. Do you know what plugged mean? Arteriosclerosis, you know what that means? It means an artery that it delivers so many gallons of blood per hour is delivering much less than this amount. And do you think we have this problem or no? We do have this problem. It's been proven that we do have circulation problems because the type of life we live, the type of diet we've been under. And then also, the heart itself, it gets weaker. And also, something else very important, you might not have any blockage in your circulation whatsoever. But if you happen to be a woman, and you have hormones, and the hormones are changing through your life, through the month, certain times of the month, your arteries will close. You get spasm certain times, and you feel headache, you feel throbbing, you feel light, you feel that, you feel that, because your brain is telling you, I'm not getting enough blood, I don't feel good. And you develop symptoms from that too. And some of us, even men and women, have, can have a chest pain. And it, it mimics heart attacks. It's similar to heart. You go to cardiologists, they do cardiac catheterization, says you've got nothing wrong with you. Then you go home and die. <laughs> have you heard about that? I'm not a cardiologist. The reason it happens, because he is only looking at the physical blockage, the, the blockage that's made of cholesterol, right here, with his dye. But he forgot that arteries can go in a spasm like this, spasm, they get a spasmatic, and you feel like pressure in the neck, pressure in the head, pressure in the chest, and you go to the hospital, they do EKG, and you rest in calm, there is no stress, they even give you Valium, so you're very relaxed, and they say, oh, you are fine, go home. You go back, you have the same thing again, because the same stress factor exists at home or at work. So, this kind of problem we have to be aware of. Not everything all in the food only. You got to take care of the food, you got to take care of the digestion, you get to take care of the absorption, you get to take care of the arteries, then we go to the cell. But I'm going to cover, I, I, I put this part of the lecture in the last minute. This was not part of my plan today. When she asked how many new people here today, and I saw so many hands, I decided to go back to the original lecture and give a few basics so you guys can follow with us forward. This is the reason I repeated that part from previous lecture. So let us 
talk very fast. And we're going to get to this oil. We're going to get to arthritis. We're going to get to all of this. Don't worry about it. Let us talk about the food itself. Are we eating the proper carbohydrates? Carbohydrates, there are two kinds. So let us talk about the causes of disease called arthritis. Actually, we're not going to call it arthritis today. We're going to call it autoimmune disease. We're going to cover a lot more than just arthritis, a lot more than just lupus. We're going to cover many, many problems related to the same disease. We're going to cover immune diseases of the brain, of the skin, of the intestine, and then and the bones, and you're going to see that you're going to fit lots of you in this category in the very end of the lecture. And I will tell you the symptoms that it fits you in if you, if you have it or you don't have it. Autoimmune diseases caused by nutritional problem or a stress problem or chemical problem. Like I said before, nutrition is right here. That's what I said. This problem right there. So, could it be the problem from lack of carbohydrates, protein, or fat, or water, or vitamins, or mineral, or oxygen, or fibers? And the answer is yes. Lots of people, problem is right here, number A. Number one, because when they eat protein, they concentrate more on animal protein. And they should eat more vegetable protein. When they eat carbohydrates, they concentrate more, uh, more on simple carbohydrates, like sugar and fruit. And they should concentrate on what? Whole grains. And when they eat fat, they concentrate most on margarine, butter, and lard. And they should eat what? Polyunsaturated fatty acid, which is oil. When they, when they take vitamins, either they don't take vitamins at all, or they take synthetic vitamins, and they not... Uh, and then I have a note right here from Doris, or somebody says, be sure to talk about Shackley vitamins. So I'm going to say... Yeah, I do recommend Shackley products, and I do take it, and my family takes it, and it is the best product in the market right now. And uh, are you happy with that? <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. We've been friends for a long time. So, she, so in any way, and I don't have an interest in Shackley. I'm not a Shackley distributor. I don't have stocks in the company, but I'm a very honest doctor. When Shackley did something wrong, I told the people over the years, this is wrong. When they do something right, I said, that's right. It's the most wonderful, complete product in the market right now. Now, we talked about this, that we need to take vitamins. We need to take extra vitamins. The lecture tonight is not why we need for supplements. You've got to go back to the original lectures I have given over the years, and one of them it says, why we need for supplements right here, and if it's not here, then I have to give one in January then. <laughs> I don't see it here. <laughs> I think we screwed up. <laughs> we have to do that. <laughs> so, in any way, yeah, there is a lecture called why we need for supplements specifically, and I always give it. Apparently, we didn't do that. So we're going to do that, I hope, in February if we get good weather, <laughs> which we always do, I we? <laughs> we always have snow that night of the lecture. So the vitamins deficiency create problems. And you don't need me to tell you about that because you, you can read about that. Water also, not enough water or the wrong kind of water is also part of our problem. Oxygen, not having enough exercise part of our problem. Fibers, not having enough fibers, part of our problem. So you can't just pinpoint Dr. Nathan, what should I take? Which vitamin should I take so I can be perfect? I said, I don't know. You have to take all of these. You have to improve your digestion. You have to improve your absorption. You have to improve your detoxification. And you have to improve your circulation. Then you will see results. You follow me? Okay. Let us talk about digestion and absorption right now. 
The second problem, the second problem, you may be eating all these vitamins properly, doing everything right. However, in your stomach right here, the food gets digested. Do you know why food gets digested? Because we cannot absorb that type of food. When you eat tomatoes, we don't see tomato seeds in the blood. When we eat beans, we don't see beans in the blood. When we eat bread, we don't see bread in the blood. Everything is what? Digested to fine product, fine molecules. And you all underestimate your digestive system. And you take acidophilus, you take hydrochloric acid, you take everything, but the only thing you need to do for digestive system to improve it is to take alfalfa. That's all you have to do. I raise horses. I raise Egyptian horses. I brought them from Egypt with me because they belong to the family, and I don't want the Russian when they occupied Egypt to kill them. They're good at that. So I brought them. My father, before he died, he sent all of them to me, right? He took care of them, and I raise it. And the only thing I give these big animals is alfalfa. I raise it myself. I grow it myself in the field and fertilize it myself and give it to them. I don't give them grain. Just alfalfa. And none of them have cold, have neither dentist, and neither cardiologist. I never heard them complain. <laughs> okay, and they do it because alfalfa is have a double edged sword. Alfalfa is anti acid because it has chlorophyll and it has the ability to absorb acid, so if you have lots of acid, Take some of your alfalfa in your stomach and you will see it's more potent than in some protein for acid. More potent than calcium for acid. And also, it is anti-bad breath because chlorophyll itself has the ability to absorb gases. It is anti-bile, so if you have gallbladder problem, that you don't have so much acid, you have so much bile, it's also anti bile It has a, it's a buffer. You know what the word buffer? If it's acid, it makes it neutral. If it's alkaline, it makes it neutral. So that is the best thing you can help with the digestive system, as you have. But the alfalfa is not the only one. Vegetables, salads with the dye, cooked vegetables will do the same thing. Alfalfa happens to be fresh, tablets, have lots of vitamins, where your vegetables you eat every day in the market does not have 1% of what it's supposed to have. But it has chlorophyll. It doesn't have all the fish minerals, it doesn't have all the vitamins, but it has chlorophyll, and chlorophyll, that's what we need. So you need more vegetables to improve the digestion. And if you do have a digestive problem, you got to find out, is it an ulcer? or gastritis, or cancer. If you have a heartburn, you got to be checked first through gastroscopy to see what you got. Why do you have heartburn? I had a patient from Iowa. He had a heartburn. He went to the doctor. He belonged to HMO. HMO is the worst type of insurance you can have because the main goal of HMO is not to do anything. Everything treats the symptoms only. So he had a heartburn, and he's an HMO, and he happened to be a black. So the doctor looked at him and said, oh, you have nothing wrong with you. Just hear this, your male accent, go home. No test was done. Next month, he comes back, has the same problem. You need tagamet. Go home. Next month, he has the same problem. Oh, you need more ligrin. You need tepsis. You need danatol. Go home. I got all the records. He got fed up with that. He went to make clinic, paid on his own $7,000. And they looked inside, and they find cancer. That's spreading all over. So he's going to die. I want to win him. He's supposed to be dead three months ago, uh, six months, uh, in three months. He's now nine months, having died yet. But... I'm not very optimistic because the cancer is spreading very rapidly and I'm doing everything I can without loss of success. 
So what I'm saying right here when you have a symptom, don't treat it without knowing what causes the symptom. Any symptom. So the digestion, that's how you improve it. To absorb, to digest the food, the pancreas has to make enzymes, right? Can you digest food without enzymes? You can't, right? What is the enzyme made of? What is the enzyme made of? Made from vitamins and trace minerals. So if you take an enzyme, any enzyme, amylase or lipase or pepsin or trypsin, all the other, and you, do, you don't have enough vitamins and trace minerals to build it, you will have enzyme deficiency and you don't digest food properly. And you have to take yogurt and acidophilus and all of that to digest better. But if you take vitamins and trace minerals, your pancreas will start making its own enzymes again, and you don't have to take all this extra digestive aid. Now, we go to the absorption. The food that's been digested has to be absorbed. How does absorption occur? To, to explain that to you, I'm going to have to make a detailed picture about your gut right here. This is your intestine right here, the big one. Here comes the digested carbohydrates, the digested protein, and the digested fat, and the vitamins, and the water, and the minerals, and the fiber. How does absorption occur? We have in the intestine right here little holes, and they look from the side view like this, the inside the intestine. And the food comes, the food comes, and gets trapped in this area here. The food gets trapped in this area right here. Are you following me? The intestine have all of this big lies. All little holes. There is a hole right here next to it. And the food in that for a period of time. It could be thirty seconds or it could be in some areas sixty seconds or some areas five seconds. Some areas of the body, the food has to sit for five seconds, and the, the gut stops for five seconds. In another area, it stops for 30 seconds. In another area, it stops for 60 seconds. Why is that? Why do you think the bowel starts and stops, starts and stops all the time? To give a chance, because inside the, the bowel wall, there's a guy sitting right here with hands. And he grabs the food and puts it inside the blood. And he needs time to put his hand out, reach to the food, and take it in and put it inside. This is called absorption. When you're nervous, the intestine moves what? Very, very fast. The time in front of every area gets what? Decrease, correct? And if you constipated, it moves to slow. And the time have increased. If it's increased, it's, it's going to do harm because the food ferments with the bacteria and intoxicates the bowel. And if it goes so fast, there is no absorption. We have irritable bowel disease or Crohn disease or ulcerative colitis, or diverticulitis. All these diseases give you the same problem. What are the symptoms of that? That when you eat certain food, you get cramps, you get diarrhea, or you get constipated. For that reason, we say the following, that the fibers should be a big part of the diet. Because the fibers do, they work like alfalfa does. Fibers. What do they do to the bowel? If it moves too fast, slows it down. If it moves too slow, speeds it up. 
So if you have diarrhea and you take lots of fiber, you will be a little bit constipated. If you have constipation, you take fiber, you have a little bit loose stool. It works in both ways. So what we have right here, we have to take lots of fiber. In horses, if we give them lots of grain with less fiber, they have colic. And if we give them the wrong food, they have diarrhea. So we have to give them always certain amount of fiber every day. 30 pounds of fiber every day each horse has to get. But from vitamins and minerals, we give them only 2 pounds. But 30 pounds of fiber. So you have to eat more fiber than any of those. Also water is very important to assist absorption. We move from this part right here to discuss the liver detoxification. And the food will move out of here and goes to the liver. And here comes the liver right here, and the food is coming from the gut to the liver. The liver have a street called Main Street. This is Main Street. It's called the Hotel Arthur Veins means the, means the main street, actually. In those, look what happened God put there. The Lord put something special in each area. He had little houses, little shops. Each shop had a door. We call this copper cells. Copper cells specialize of detoxifying the food coming. They screen the food and they feel which one is alcohol. Aha, uh -huh, he's been drinking with the meal. He got his beer with the wine next to him. Let's remove that. Because the heart doesn't want to get drunk from the stuff. So they remove all the stuff, chemicals. Or uh, he's smoking after the meal. Let's remove some of the nicotine. And so on and so. They take all the chemical garbage from here and they put it in the alley behind them right here. And the garbage truck comes and puts it in a big dumpster called the gold bladder and takes it out of the, of the body. And detoxification occurs. Cook for cells that work with enzymes. And their enzymes need what? Vitamins and trace minerals. And the best source of trace minerals in the market right now is something called Formula One that Shackley has. They have not perfected it yet, because it has the best trace minerals, but it does not have the best taste. <laughs> but one day, they will develop the technology to improve on that. I could do it for them if I have the time, but I'm sure they have chemists will do that. The trace minerals, Formula One, the vitamins you take will help the detoxification process. We don't have time to go through which vitamins, which mineral right here. This is come in another lecture. Then we travel from here. The liver is down here. And we go to the heart. And the heart takes it and sends it to the cell. And let us move and go to the cell. The cell is right like that. Some people might fall to sleep, so I bring this guy back here so you recognize him. <laughs> now we are in the brain. We are in the lung. We are in the kidney. We are in the skin. We are in the bone. We are in the ovary, in the test. Every cell in the body, we are there now. So the cell is a representation of any cell in the body. Are you following me or no? All cells have the same metabolism. They require... They just protein, carbohydrates, fat, vitamins, water, mineral, and oxygen. Do they need fiber? Fiber do not enter the bloodstream. And there are some cardiologists right now telling people and writing in books that fibers enter the bloodstream and get rid of cholesterol. It never. Fibers never enter the bloodstream. Because they're too strong, too long of the molecules, you have to have simple glucose, simple fractals to enter. You cannot have over, over two, two units, and fibers, 150,000 units. So, 
the protein and carbohydrate are fed into the cell. And the cell works. Let's say, let's say this is a brain cell. What do brain cells do? They think for you, so you can see, you can remember, you can wake up, you can enjoy life, and they need this food. The food goes inside, and it gets metabolized. How it gets metabolized? In the middle of the cell, there is something called what? Nucleus. And in the nucleus, there is DNA. And the DNA tells the cell what it needs. Some cells need more stuff than others. If we're talking about right here pancreas, it might need more manganese and magnesium and chromium. If we're talking about prostate cells, it might need more zinc. If we're talking about liver cells, it might need more uh, of different minerals. If we're talking about bone, it might need more what? Calcium. But they all, the proportion he changes, but the amount, uh, the type is the same, but the amount is different. So the cell gets to the food, digest it, use it, and you, you make energy, and the cell produces waste. The waste is called hydrogen peroxide. It's called three, what? Radicals. And they are poison. They cause cancer to the cell. So immediately inside the cell, God put certain vitamins inside the wall right here called antioxidant vitamins. That's the vitamin C and E and B and now beta carotene. Those right here being anti-chemical, they put their hand inside, take the waste, and put it where? What's in here? What is this outside of the cell? The blood. Put it in the blood. And the blood takes it where? To the kidney and liver and get rid of it. And the cycle continues. And we survive since Adam and Eve until today by the same simple mechanism. We survived in the days of the dinosaurs without cardiologists and, uh, and therapists and all the hospitals. We survived. Why did we survive? Because we are built perfect. You follow me? And the only reason we get problems is we cause our own problems ourselves. We destroy ourselves. Either destroy our own body or destroy the body of others. We are good, we're human being good at that. We're selfish. We want for me, don't care about my neighbor. Or next country. We take radioactive dumps from the United States, and we might dump it on Trinidad. Or put it in Mexico. Or put it in, uh, in Egypt. I heard one time about uh, there was a nuclear accident in Russia, and they were taking the nuclear waste, take it to Egypt those days, to dump it uh, uh, fertilizers in the farm so people don't know. They, they're ignorant. They wouldn't know. Until a group called the Peace uh, Group, like uh, uh, international group, they monitor things like that. They demonstrate and they block the train. Greenpeace. Uh, Greenpeace. They block the train because they knew there is radioactive material going to another country. Because we live in one planet. When you poison one area, it comes back to you. You know what I mean? It's the same cycle underwater current is the same, the air is the same. So if we have to survive, we have to do it together as human race. But we cannot survive alone. Everyone is important. We have progress in this country. They don't have progress in Brazil or Africa. But the trees they have there in Brazil and Africa, they don't have roads, they don't have a smart. It's taken our carbon dioxide and monoxide converted to oxygen and we get it back. You understand? It is always somebody benefits from somebody else. You bet if you be alone and selfish, you pay the price or your kids will pay the price eventually. And that's what we're seeing. That's the reason I selected immune disease today because I'm going to show you how serious problem our children are heading right now 
with autoimmune disease diseases, and us also. If the waste does not get removed, what does it do to the cell? It poisons the cell. That's perfect to answer. It poisons the cell. Inside the cell right here, there is a DNA molecule. DNA has something called nucleic acid, protein. How many of them? One, two, three, four. Four nucleic acids. I'm not saying how many chromosomes. How many nucleic acids? There are four. And out of the four, for the people here who don't believe in God, some of us don't, lots of us don't, I want you to figure the answer to this question. Out of four probabilities, which we know, four amino acids only, right there, four nucleic acids, we get 4,000 billion reactions, different reactions. Mathematically, you cannot do it out of four. Can you? Can you take four probability and come up with 4,000 billion possibilities? And that's what we see. When you look at the cell, you see 4,000 billion possibilities. When you look at the protein, there are only four. How this causes this, we don't know. But one thing we know, if the chemical, the waste, goes inside, it could destroy that one. And once it destroys that one, watch what happened now. The DNA makes something called antibodies, immune globulin antibodies. The DNA makes what? Makes Antibody. Are you following me or are you falling asleep? Antibody. Antibody, don't underestimate that word. Open your head. Antibody is the substance made us live since Adam until today. The antibody. A antibody means anti-enemy. The anti-enemy protein it makes, it fights everything for you. It fights cancer, it fights virus, it fights bacteria, it fights poison, it fights gas, it fights everything for us. Antibody. That's perfect. We have five kinds of antibodies. We have A, the G, the M, the D, and the E. IgG, 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 all of those immune globulins come out all the time, pumping out. When they come out, what do they do? They look for enemies. They look for cancer. They look for poison. They look for a virus. They look for a bacteria. They look for anything that's going to hurt you. And they destroy it. That's perfect, right? But they have to come from a perfect code. When the code gets destroyed because it's waste, accumulation through vitamin deficiency, then the product comes out called imperfect mutated antibody. Mutated antibody, retarded antibody, doesn't know what it's doing. And the antibody, rather than attacking the bacteria, attacks the cell itself and destroys its own cell. We call it that autoimmune disease. Auto means you self-induce in it in your system. You destroy yourself. You die slowly. And when we look at the old books that God sent to us, the Bible that the Christian believe in, the Quran that we Muslims believe in, in both books God says, I will. If you don't follow yourself, protect yourself on earth and all that, I will make you produce something that you self-destruct your own self. Until you realize the light in the end of the tunnel and get closer to it, then you are, safe. you are better off. So we can't just go ahead and dump chemicals in our air. 30,000 chemicals in our air, food, and water that causes problems in the immune system. 
stories out of chemicals. I'm not making that up. When I give you information, it's published. I just read it, and you don't read it. Because I have access to it, you don't have access to it. But if you want to go in the library and read the literature in books like Our Poison Earth and Sky by Rodel by Prevention Magazine, or read about the chemicals in the air, chemicals in water, water pollution, you're going to be disgusted. You're going to be disgusted to the point that look at the curve we have done to ourselves. I'm not anti-progress. We can have progress, but we have no laws to protect the environment and the human rights. We want to make the fast buck today, not worry about tomorrow. And that is not, to me, it is not. I'm a doctor. My main job is to save a life. And I don't care how much money you have. I don't care if you're rich or poor. Life is life. So when I see it destroyed, I have to discuss it in my lectures. When I look right here, from the year 1900 to 1992, and the amount of chemicals in the water is going up like this, and the food, and the air, and everything, man-made chemicals, and we don't stop it, we all pay the price. And the price, I see it in my practice right now, slowly immune disease is being destroyed. And people coming with all kinds of bizarre symptoms. And then, first thing I think about, could it be something wrong with the immune system? When I treat the immune system, they feel better. Why? Because this is the problem right here, the chemicals we add. We can counter some of these chemicals, ladies and gentlemen, with antioxidants. But some of it cannot be removed by antioxidants. Some of those chemicals, like radioactive substances, lead and arsenic and mercury, we have to give amino acids intravenously to get it out of the system. And that is what happened here to the immune system by the chemical you produce or you get in the air or for the water. So when we say in the triangle earlier that the chemical causing disease and deficiency causing autoimmune disease, now you understand what I'm talking about, correct? And stress the same way. And having chemicals will deplete vitamins, and you don't have enough to fight back. And having chemicals, we require more vitamins, and the chemicals can cause stress. Chemicals in Coke and Pepsi causing children hyperactivity these days. The diet stuff. Stress takes vitamins, leach vitamins out of the body. Am I correct or no? And stress itself causes autoimmune disease. So we have a cycle going on right here, and we have a disease produced called autoimmune disease. Antibodies, that's coming out. We gave them different names. These antibodies, we saw some, they attack the nucleus. They go back, attack the DNA itself, the whole, I'm sorry, they attack the whole nucleus, destroy the whole nucleus. We call it anti-nuclear antibody, ANA, that is lupus. Some of them attack only the DNA. You know the DNA? You know what DNA is? DNA is the origin of life. Life starts from DNA. Do you, do you know that or not? And life... If you, you cannot destroy the DNA, this is why we're not successful with viruses. Because viruses are made from DNA and RNA, and there is not par any drug powerful enough to destroy the virus made of ANA or DNA. Uh, RNA, I'm sorry, and DNA, just like AIDS virus, it will destroy the, the whole body in the same time. We call that chemotherapy. So chemotherapy will destroy this nucleic acid. The ANA this attacks the, the nucleus. 
that we have anti-DNA attached to the DNA. We have some come out, and they don't even attack the cell where they are, but they go attack the skin and cause aging of the skin. We call that anti-smooth muscle, and that disease called scleroderma or psoriasis. Cause premature aging. Or lupus, skin lupus also. You get rash on the face and all of that, that's from that. This side right here. Some of them affect the joint. We call RA, rheumatoid arthritis. They go and attack only the joint, cause rheumatoid arthritis. Some of them attack the brain itself and cause Alzheimer's. And some attack the whole immune system and cause cancer. And some of them attack the lymphatic system and cause allergy. So we have and, by the way, every year we discover new ones. They are there, but we don't have the technology to look for them. So we have weird proteins coming out, attacking the body itself. And when the person comes in, I say, gosh, you know, I have these symptoms. I tell them, let us check you for immune disease. Then we do this stuff right here. I check all of that stuff here. And I find he has or she has a problem with the immune system. Some of you may know a little bit of chemistry or biochemistry. To try to correct the code inside DNA is almost impossible. Are you following me? When the code gets disturbed, it is almost impossible to bring it back. And the only thing I can do is block the production of the antibodies using nutrition and medication combination. But if you use medication alone, you will fail for lupus patients. You give a steroid, a steroid, a steroid, eventually you're going to have problems with your bones and, and everything else. Our lupus patients, we don't have this problem. We, will, we give a new quantity of steroids very infrequently, but we get lots of nutrition, and we see the disease is well controlled. And people been with lupus for 10 years, they have no problem. No problem means what? The lupus patient, the lupus cells, the ANA, supposed to attack the nucleus of the skin, of the heart, of the intestine, of the guts, of the kidney, of the brain, and my patients do fine. They don't come with severe headache, that the brain has been attacked, they don't come with severe pain. This means the pericardium has been attacked, pericarditis. They don't come with rash on the face all over that the skin has been attacked. They don't come with intestinal bleeding, means the stomach has been attacked. So they must be doing good. So we don't run tests all the time. We run it only a few times. And once they're stable, they know what to do. And this is the problem right here. The chemicals and the lack of vitamins. Now, what diseases is autoimmune disease? To discuss that, let us take the human body again and look for each one of them. Some of them attack the brain. Some of them attack the skin. Some of them attack the joints. And some of them attack the heart. And some of them attack the intestine. There are so many of them, I try to just select a few of them so you don't get confused. These are the most common ones I'm going to concentrate on. When it attacks the brain, what symptoms would we have? We will have headache. Well, every, lots of people have headache. The headache is different. Headache from antibodies you always know it's coming. The light bothers you. The nose bothers you. It, it lasts one or two days, and, uh, and then you feel sick. You don't feel good. We call it migraine headache. 
So a migrant headache is autoimmune disease headache. So that's something we have to look closely for somebody who have autoimmune disease headache because if the artery that is taking blood to the brain, if that artery is being attacked by an antibody, which creates what? Then, eventually that person is going to lose his memory or her memory. Because if you have one attack every week, one every day, one every month, during that time, you don't have enough blood going to the brain. Then you lose brain tissue. So that is one of the symptoms the brain has. Some people will have Parkinson because the antibody did not attack the artery, attacked different parts of the brain. And they have the shaking and the shoveling motion when they walk. Some start losing memory completely. Alzheimer's, because the memory center is being attacked. But I said in the beginning, almost all of these things can be helped if we stop it in time. If we get in and say, okay, enough is enough, enough damage has been done already, let's stop it now. This is why when I have a patient with, I suspect, autoimmune disease, some of my patients here know, I treat it the first day before even I get the rest of the test. Because I just don't want to waste a month until I get the result. Maybe that month is the most important month. Some problems. The light bottle, scotomas, dancing spots, all of these things that indicate there is some brain problem. If they attack the skin, you will see the skin red. Red in the face or red in many other joints. Could be a rheumatic fever or could be lupus or scleroderma. Or if even the skin is dry, scaly and dry, that might uh, mean. Something is attacking it. Too many wrinkles. Premature aging. Everyone gets wrinkles, but premature, too much in short time. That maybe is, is something attacking the skin. And that also can be slowed down or stopped. The joints can be attacked. Like what disease we talked about? What disease? Rheumatoid arthritis. And some people have rheumatoid arthritis right here, right? Right. And you know what happened. The bone is fine. The muscle is fine. It's only the joints being distracted. And also, we have to slow that down. We, we're not going to be able to cure it completely because the code has been damaged. But we can slow it to significantly that it does not have damage to other organs besides the joints. So if you take gold shots, if you take Feldene, Naproxen, or, uh, or Methotrexate, whatever, it's not going to do it alone. You have to work with the whole system that I had mentioned before, the whole triangle we have to work with. We have to improve the nutrition. We have to decrease the stress. We have to detoxify the body intravenously. We have to take the body and wash it, sometimes in some people. Give them something to clean the system inside, and then we see good results. The heart can get affected. And when the heart gets affected, it gives you chest pain. It could be sharp if the sac of the heart has been affected like pericardium, or it could be dull ache, similar to muscle like pressure in the chest. And in the heart, if you go have an EKG, it might look normal. If you have an echocardiogram, it might look normal. If you have a failure scan, it might look normal. But you still have the problem. So a physician has to treat the patient, not the test. You follow me? A physician has to treat the patient. What the patient says is always accurate. Nobody wants to be sick. Everybody wants to feel good. Like Dr. says in your head. You want attention. Who wants attention? Who loves to without feeling good? 
this is the most degrading comments I hear from my colleagues when they tell a patient how she's making it up. I said, come on, you know, how can a human being make things up? Because you love to brag about how good you feel. Nobody wants to say, okay, you know, I feel sick. But sometimes when you're so sick for so long, you get depressed about it. And we look at the depression, we don't look at what's causing the depression. And that is another problem. So the heart is being ignored. And when we do test on patients, we find the valve being swollen. Lots of patients have mitral valve prolapse, that's autoimmune disease. Lots of patients have enlarged heart, that's autoimmune disease. And maybe high blood pressure and diabetes is autoimmune disease, and we don't know yet. Maybe. Maybe something attacking the arteries, making the blood pressure go up, not the cholesterol only, but the others may be that. We don't know yet. We don't have enough data on that topic. Intestine can be attacked. Have you heard about ulcerative colitis? Have you heard about Crohn's disease? Have you heard about regional enteritis? Uh, uh, and, and the most common thing you hear, irritable bowel, that your bowel is irritated. Irritable bowel, in my opinion, is also a kind of autoimmune disease. Why you have the same stress I have, and your bowel is irritated and mine is not? So it must be something in your system not doing right, and it's not your mother did it. Something is causing irritation to the bowel. Sometimes we have antibodies. And then the, the funny thing of all, my patients who have ulcerative colitis with humongous amount of ulcers, you know, have you seen a patient with ulcerative colitis, they bleed, bleed, bleed all the time? I have patients, many of them, one of them actually was bleeding one pint every eight hours. And then, I don't know if she's here today or not, but they were going to take all the bowels out. That's about 12 years ago. I said, no, I don't like that. Once you lose your bowels, what you got left? And I, she's bleeding so heavy. So I, I said, okay, I tell you what. You and your husband come, stay in the clinic all night. I stayed with them in my office all night. Me and her husband, she treating her with intravenous uh, uh, steroids to calm down the intestine all night. Until, and, and enemas and all kinds of things until by the morning the bleeding starts. And we start building the immune system uh, with amino acids, vitamin amino acids for about three months. At home, now she's fine. This is about 12 years have not had one episode of bleeding. But she's taking treatment all the time. Even she's pregnant. We, she is pregnant. She just got pregnant about a year, six months ago. She's pregnant now. I still continue the medication. Because if I start it, she might lose the baby. And that is for ulcerative colitis. I have another one from actual water shop from right here. And she has maybe a million polyps in her colon. When I look inside, polyp, 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 it means she's going to have cancer inside there. Even so, we didn't remove the colon until today. Six months, we kept everything as it is, but we're monitoring cancer with blood test, cancer test, CEA, to see when she's developing cancer. That's when we're going to remove it. So far, she has not. And she's taking lots of nutrition. But one thing important she got, besides the treatment I'm giving her, I give her good nutrition, no stress. You know, her biggest stress, the doctor always tell her, you're going to lose your bowel, and you're going to have cancer, and you're going to die. Every visit, you're going to lose your bowel, you're going to have cancer, you're going to die. You know, if you have perfect bowel, and I keep telling you, you're going to lose your bowel, you're going to have cancer, you're going to die, you're going to die anyway, worrying about it. Because, you know, stress is bad. You know, I know when I have a stress, I can't sleep, you know, thinking all night. You know, I had a patient, I called her, uh, she called me from, he, she and her daughter from Memphis. I saw them a few days ago, and she had pro some, pro some problem with drugs. I mean, she's taking too many drugs from her doctor. 
and she had angina, but she was not treated for it. She was treated for nerves. And when she had checked on, she had angina, she doesn't have problem with her nerves. Her arteries blocked 90%, all of them. But she was treated for nerves. You know, she had six drugs for nerves. Six. Phenobarbital, Dilantin, uh, Xanax, Ativan, and, and Dalmain, and I don't remember, something else. I said, wait a minute. None of these drugs are going to correct the problem. Just hide in it. So anyway, she told me her daughter had another problem. She was treated for um, some thyroid, something like that in Memphis. When she came, her heart rate was 110. Uh, resting. When she stood up, 120. When she walked a little bit, 140. Are you following me how bad that is? How long have you been like this? 20 years. <laughs> you're about to go to just a heart failure. So anyway, I treated the daughter, and then the mother, I, 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 I treated her, and she called me, they, and then I was changing the prescription for the daughter, and I forgot to call the mother. I told her I'm going to call the prescription for you, and I forgot. I had the daughter, the prescription, the mother, and I called one without the other. I went home. At 11 o'clock at night, I remembered. I didn't sleep until the morning, worrying about she's okay. She's going to have a heart attack. She's okay. I couldn't get her number. It would be easier if I went to the office and got the number. I called her, but I didn't do that. You know, it would have been easier. But if I did travel the pharmacies in Memphis, none of them opened that time anyway. <laughs> so in any way, stress is a big factor in our life, and we have to learn how to minimize that. So those people with poor involvement, they develop also problem like that. So out of all of these arthritis, I would say osteoarthritis is the least, and gout is the least related to autoimmune disease. It is related to wear and tear in the joints, secondary to lack of collagen and vitamin C and trauma. And gout, the most common cause of gout is what? Huh? No, it's not. alcohol is a big factor of it, you're right. Fat is not. Protein is not. The most common cause of it is water pill. Diazide and Lasix and water, treat, uh, water pill. So if you know somebody has gout, that's what causes it. Water pills. Water pills are very serious, and 99% of my patients do not take water pills. One person take water pill only for a short period of time when they have water, severe water retention. So gout is not a serious problem. That is the easiest to cure because you remove the medicine, they do fine. But gout sometimes goes by cancer if it's new gout. So if you're not taking water pills, you have gout, you have to worry about lymphoma or cancer of the lymphatic system can come as gout. Osteoarthritis is a wear and tear. All you have to do with osteoarthritis, we're going to talk about that in November. Whatever joint is bothering you, exercise the muscles around the joint. So the muscle gets stiff and big, so it can push the joints apart. Let's say, let's say I have osteoarthritis on my back. And the back, you have bones and the nerves coming out. Because you have the muscles in the, in the back is weak, and the muscles in the front are weak. So what happens, the weight is on what? In the vertebra. So what we do, I say to the person, do sit-ups with your knee bend. Your head like this, do sit-ups. One a day, then two a day, then five, then 25, then 50 sit-ups. That will strengthen the muscle in the front and the back. And you will see that eventually the muscle starts pulling, pulling apart like this, because the muscle gets full of blood when it gets healthy. So it pushes the bone apart and the pain starts disappearing. And that is a recommendation. Try to recommend to people who have back pain, and you will see that helps them tremendously. The simple exercise. We will talk about, uh, more about osteoarthritis in detail in November, God willing. 
And we have covered all of that. The last thing I want to say now, that the causes of autoimmune disease. Autoimmune disease, it presents, I'm repeating the lecture now. It present, what time is it? No, we, we are doing good on time, right? Okay. Autoimmune disease, Again, is a disease that you make an antibodies attack in your body. It presents as symptoms of the nerves in the brain, like memory and migraine and all of that, or nerves in the hands, like multiple sclerosis. It's autoimmune disease. Weakness, tingling, and all of that. It could attack the heart, it could attack the skin, it could attack the joints, it could attack the intestine. Still attack the brain itself. Uh, I remember one time when I was in training, uh, 1977, 1977, when I was doing the internship, we met around, we have a girl came in a coma by ambulance. She was in a coma. And we don't have any records on her whatsoever. She came in a coma. She's in intensive care unit. Every test we did was negative. Everything was negative. Then I thought about it. Could she have attack of autoimmune disease in her brain? I mean, spinal test, MRI, everything was normal, but she's in a coma. <laughs> then I thought she may be lupus. Maybe autoimmune disease attacked the brain. Then I told my teacher, my professor that time, I had two professors uh, with me that time, what happens if I give her 1,000 milligrams of cortisone, steroids, intravenously. And he looked at me and smiled. He said, what are you thinking about? I said, I'm thinking about autoimmune disease. He said, that's a good point. Go ahead, tell the nurse to go ahead and get me that right now. We gave it. In five minutes, she wake up. It was a lupus making swelling in the brain. This is why all the tests were normal. MRI was normal. Spinal tap was normal. And this whole thing was attack on the brain. Autoimmune disease can attack the many parts of the body without you know it. And the blood test will tell us if you have it or not. Usually 90% are accurate. Now, if you have these diseases, you have to be treated with medical management, means a drug of some kind. As long as the drug doesn't cause harm to the body or more harm than help, that's okay. And the nutrition that you have to take, more vegetarian protein, like vegetables, beans, shackling some protein, less animal protein, and more fish. And carbohydrates, you have to eat more starches and frequently rather than fruit and sugar all the time. And fat. Take lots of oil in your diet. Use oil. Every chance you use oil in your body, put oil in your body. Oil never raises cholesterol. Because there is no oil God made has cholesterol in it. Except coconut oil has some cholesterol. The rest of the oil doesn't have any cholesterol. But oil is P-U-F-A, polyunsaturated fatty acid. It will go in and detoxify the body when you take it. How would you take oil? Drink oil? No. You can have some oil with french fries. French fries is fine. Potatoes, starches in oil. It's true if it's a dark brown, you burn it too much, it has carcinogen, but if it is light yellow, there's nothing wrong with that. You can actually add oil to certain food, and you think it's butter. The whole time you think it's butter. Actually, if you have oil, and cool it down a little bit in the freezer, certain oils, and add something to make it thick, and the kids will spray it in the bread, they will never notice the difference between that and butter. It's in their head. Oil actually, especially peanut oil, I'm told, it does taste like butter. 
but we have addiction to butter. It, it, butter tastes better than oil. Butter, it tastes good. So does lard. So does fat. So does steak. So does coke and Pepsi and sugar and sweets and chocolate. We know that. You ask alcoholic, how do you like alcohol? I like it. But not everything we like is good for us. We have to have discipline with, with our body. What you invest now in your body, you get later. What you destroy now, you pay later. That's the equation. You're not going to run away from it. And then you need vitamins for autoimmune disease. Vitamin C and E and B are the most important ones. You need mineral, formula one is the important one. How much? It depends how bad you are, again, because you can't just say how much is to somebody, because if you have somebody with autoimmune disease or the ulcer, you have to be careful with certain supplements, because they're going to have pain. So we have to adjust it according to individual. And water. You have you have your best water, Shackley makes that it filters the water. You can use that. Or you can buy bottled water if it is by reverse osmosis, not that they call the spring water. When they say spring or uh, what's the other name, um, artesian and all of that, it all means it is from the well and the farm next door to you with all the chemicals in it. So that's what Joyce told me. They, uh, they go to her mother's house and they take all the water. I didn't know that. But, yeah, no, from now on, I'm not going to buy any water from the, when I'm a trip unless it stays by reverse osmosis. But do not drink distilled water. It's very dangerous. Okay. And then the last thing is fiber. Fibers decide that what they do in the stomach, what they do in absorption, Fibers also do something very important in the intestine. Fibers, when they go inside the intestine, they make it big. When they enlarge the intestine, they increase the absorption, and you benefit more from your nutrients when you take fibers. Okay. Oxygen. That comes from exercise. You have to exercise. But before you exercise, I advise you, you should have a stress test to check your blood pressure when you exercise, to be sure your blood pressure doesn't go up during exercise. It is not uncommon. I find people with a blood pressure of 110 over 70, and when they uh, put them in the treadmill, it went to 240 over 130 in one minute. And when they rest, it goes back to normal. Blood pressure should always be taken under stress, not resting. Resting blood pressure, it means nothing. Stress blood pressure is what means something. Another thing you should do, that's, if you have high blood pressure, that's what you should do. Tell your doctor, check my blood pressure when my heart rate is 130. But don't check my blood pressure when my heart rate is, is, is 80. Because I want to know if it's working or not. That is the way you're going to prevent stroke. Stress test is so important. When you do it, you have to carry it all the way through. And what I do, I take a person to stage six if they can, and we have to achieve 95% of the maximum heart rate without any sign of problem. You have to do all of that, number two. Number three, you have to decrease the stress in your life. The best way to decrease the stress, besides meditation or praying, number one, number two, sleep, number three, exercise. Whenever you're under stress, exercise. Take a walk. Get in the treadmill. You could not be running. Your heart rate is 150 per minute, 170, and you go like this and worrying about your stress. There is no way you can have both. Your body is about to collapse, so you only worry about something you make it. You know? So if somebody asks you, just start on the treadmill, and so when they come and yell at you again, go back on the treadmill, and then that's your escape goal. Sleep. 
is very important. Lots of people don't get enough sleep. And lots of people when they sleep, they don't have good night's sleep. We have to work on that. If the hormones are need to be corrected, we correct it. If nutrition has to be corrected, we have to be done. You have to have a good night's sleep to rejuvenate the body for next day. And then detoxification is done two ways. One, you do it, and the second is the doctor does it. You, by having the right water, the right food, the right things in your house, and put air purifier in your house in the winter. Get air pollinate, those things that take the air ionizer, clean, especially in your bedroom at least. Put one of those in the bedroom to take all the dust and the chemicals and all of that from air so when you breathe in oxygen, it goes in without, without disturbing your body at night. The thing the doctor does should check for poison. Because we check, we find out some people have some lead, chemical, arsenic, and all of this, and we have to remove that from the body. And mercury, and we have to remove it for the person to stay healthy. Well, that's it for the lecture today. And uh, if I didn't cover everything, and you have a question, I'm going to give you my phone number. It's 708 356 9009. It's Dr. Nasser in the ASR and the office in Illinois, Wisconsin border, down uh, by close to Antioch or Waukegan. And uh, it's called Medical Care Center. If you have a question, you leave a message with your phone number, I get back to you. You leave a message when you can be reached. And then I call you that time. Okay, I'm going to take some questions right now. And start from the front to the back. Okay? I go through this front row first. I will get to you in a second. Yes. Wagner? Yeah, Wagner and sarcoidosis. This is all autoimmune disease. Yes. What about arthritis that's developed from Lyme disease? Uh, Arthritis developed from Lyme disease, it's a difficult to tell. I think it's autoimmune disease. I think it is, but it is too early for us to know we don't have enough data on that. But it is similar, I found out, um, I treat lots of Lyme patients. It is very similar to rheumatic fever, rheumatoid arthritis. But Lyme, it affects usually the joints and the muscle itself. And I think it's autoimmune disease because it does respond to the treatment for autoimmune disease. When we give antibiotic, it doesn't respond. But we, when we treat autoimmune disease itself, it responds. So it must be related to that. A person develops a serious ulcer from the medication for arthritis and no, no longer can take the arthritis medicine. Is there another way? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. There are so many ways. Uh, I have seen in my practice during my training so many people died from a bleeding ulcer. I have seen people come into the emergency with pain. And we do still black, we look at the stomach, it's just a bleeding a little bit. And the doctor said, no, we cannot operate until, until it stops. And it never stops and they die. So I think drugs has to be number one cause of problems in the United States right now over the age of 60 are drugs. Medications cause more problems than health. Yeah, we take, yes, I will come to you and just let me. Lack of light? Oh, yeah, depression. Uh, well, the depression is a hormonal problem. And the light, just artificial stimulation, when they have light, they feel good, but eventually they get depressed again. If you don't correct the root of the problem, no light or anything going to help. That's true. Okay, the second line right here, anybody in this one right here? None? Then I take your question, ma'am. Why is there still water aging? If you know physiology, you know that the, the cell works on osmosis. And if the osmolarity outside more than the inside, the water goes out. If the osmolarity from inside, the water goes in. 
Okay, now, you have to have a balanced cell. It has to be the difference is very little between the molecular weights outside and inside. When you have distilled water, and the outside here is zero, and the inside is 155, too much of a gradient, it creates electricity, electric current between two extensive gradients right there, and that will create malabsorption, a problem in the intestine. People taking distilled water saying it detoxifies the body. After I talk to you tonight, how are you going to detoxify the brain cell from chemicals with distilled water? How is the distilled water going to go to the brain? It doesn't get there. Because once it enters the blood, it becomes regular water. Right? Because it has to be mixed with the sodium and the chlorine and the potassium and the calcium and balances either way. Or it's no longer distilled. So it doesn't detoxify the body. Now, they say it detoxifies the intestine. It does not detoxify the intestine either. To detoxify the intestine is to what? To remove the garbage from it. The best thing is not water, is what? Fibers. Fibers because it's like a scrub brush. It's a fiber. It scrubs. It scrubs, scrubs until it cleans all the way. That is the answer. The answer to clean the colon is not, uh, not animals. Fibers. Fibers, fibers, fibers. No limited quantity of fibers. You know, somebody really so bad, start on some fibers, increase, 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 and if they cannot tolerate it, use concentrated fibers. In alfalfa form, fiber wafers, metamucil, and all of these fibers, they do the same. So what I suggest to do, alfalfa is the best of all fibers. Because the difference between a fiber and alfalfa, alfalfa has the fibers and vitamins. And the fibers have only fibers only. Okay, yes, ma'am. So, alfalfa would work for diabetes colitis, diabetes ulcers, too? Absolutely. And fibers and fibers for them would be good for diabetes? Yes, ma'am. Okay, I think this. That's correct, and then we're going to say why in November. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Um, you take this alfalfa sometimes. Yes, a lot of alfalfa, as I think they say. Yeah. What do you use for that? Okay, okay. That person who has the stress from alfalfa, they must have a reasonable bowel to start with. And alfalfa is too strong. So what you have to do, you start with small quantity of alfalfa after salad. So the alfalfa tablets get mixed with the salad and after meals. And it starts at 5 and build it to 10 or 15. Okay, but like, um, what about with the herb lax too? Herb lax is different. Herb lax is not a fiber. Okay. Herb lax is not a fiber. Herb lax is a catheritic. It's, it's like, instead of taking distilled water to clean the intestine, herb lax will do it. Okay, because it makes it move fast and then you empty fast. Okay, yes, ma'am. Uh, vertigo, you have to know the cause of the vertigo. If it is circulation problem, or, then it might. If it is the middle ear, mineral disease, then it's, if it is from high blood pressure, you have to know the, the main thing when you have a problem, you follow my recommendation. You get the diagnosis correct, then work on the treatment. Don't work on the treatment before the diagnosis. Yes, sir. Doctor, what is, did you comment on your link between your leg pain between iron and is it heart damage based on the study that was done in Finland? Uh, iron and what? And what? And heart disease? Okay, yeah, we talked about that before, why we need for supplements, selection. Basically, I, for 25 years, I warned people. I said, when you take vitamins, you can take a limited quantity. There's no problem. When you take fibers, the same thing. But when you take minerals, you have to be careful. If you don't have enough, you're in trouble. If you take too much, you're in trouble. 
you have to have the right amount. And the people who say, okay, you're anemic, here's iron, 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 you can have iron deposits in the liver, and iron deposits are crushed in the arteries, and you can have problems from it. So the best thing to do is to check the serum transferatin and ferritin and TIBC and iron. There are four tests for iron. I do. And that tells me exactly how much iron they need. But in the meantime, sometimes they don't need more iron. Sometimes they need instant protein to carry the iron. Are you following me? Because when you take the iron, it's poison. Iron is poison. It's ferrous sulfate, shackling iron is ferrous sulfate, which is a good iron, but it's still, when it gets in the blood, it's poison iron. Iron is a poison, like cyanide, like oil. So immediately there is a protein called transferrin. It grabs it and takes it to the cell and gives it to the cell and come back and gets another one and come back and gets another one. We measure how much iron in the transferrin in the body. We take the transferrin, look how much iron. If it is saturated, we tell the person don't take any more. If it is unsaturated, we tell them take more. That, that is the iron. So you can't follow one study alone. You have to be know exactly what to do about it. Okay. Yes, sir. Kidney stones like uh, uric acid stones. Uric acid stones uh, like staghorn that's caused by either overproduction of uric acid from a tumor or under secretion of uric acid from water pills or kidney disease. And usually, uh, usually what we do, we give the person good diet and good exercise and fibers and all of that, and they usually start doing better for some reason. Because I think it's a pH related, and once we take the drugs out, correct the cause of it, they do respond well. Yeah, allopurinol is, uh, again, you know, you get, you're treating the symptom. Allopurinol just releases more uric acid out, but you're not really helping the kidney or the cause of it. You got to find out why you're making so much uric acid. So remember, uric acid is this one. Here is the uric acid. This DNA thing is made of uric acid. Uric acid is a byproduct of those things. So if you have too much uric acid, you can have too, much, too many nuclear proteins coming out, maybe a virus, maybe cancer, maybe chemical. So by, by blocking that mechanism, you block the degradation of DNA, and you have less problems. Okay, uh, the lady next to him. Allergies? Allergy, there are two kinds, to, to food or to air. In air situation, it is usually lung-related, asthma and stuff like that. And that, um, basically the same treatment is going to be applied. The proper medication, the proper diet, the proper less stress and all of that. That is the problem with allergy. Allergy is not, you've got too many pollen or too many proteins in the in coming. It's you not tolerating that stuff. That's allergy of the air. Allergy of the food is the same thing. The intestine is too weak to handle certain things. You've got to strengthen the intestine. You've got to strengthen the immune system. And the immune system, it can be improved. Immune system gets improved by challenge, not by avoidance. I have a patient. She's allergic to everything, to lots of food. She can eat wheat, she can eat this, she has diarrhea. And I put her on a diet with lots of stuff allergic to. But I block the allergy with a medication. So I challenge the intestine, but in the meantime, I'm not giving the intestine a chance to give her symptoms. After one month, we took the medicine out gradually, and now I saw her last Sunday. She said, I feel fine. I eat anything I want. I have no problem. Because your body builds tolerance to it. 
The best thing for allergy strengthen the body, not make it weaker. Okay, we go on the back, the lady in the middle. Um, uh huh. I have a patient, I have a patient from Iowa with a triglyceride of 12,000 and cholesterol of 6,000. Okay, let me just tell you that. I'm taking the extreme. His mother and father and brothers all died at the age of 40. Okay, that gives you an answer. And I saw him when he was 38. Okay, when I saw that. So that gives you an answer how much he probably about to die when he came. He had lots of problems. We use this formula right here. We use the diet, medication, and right now his triglyceride is 600. Cholesterol is 400. I cannot get lower than that. But he's about 50 now, and there is no sign of any problem. And the arteries are plugged a little bit. But with the beta carotene we give him and the extensive exercise and the keeping the blood moving, we are doing good. So can we lower the cholesterol? Cholesterol is a misleading word. There is the good cholesterol and the bad. I got a woman with a cholesterol of 400. She was on cholesterol medicine. When I checked it, she had most of it was HDL. She did not need the medicine because it was, most of it was good cholesterol. I have another person with a cholesterol of 180. I asked him, he said, I'm perfect. And 170 of the 180 was LDL. And his risk factor was 11.2. You know what the risk factor is. So he, no wonder he had a stroke, he had a heart attack, and he doesn't know why. My cholesterol is fine. The problem with him is his doctor's. He's ignorant. He's not keeping up. <laughs> and then HMO doctors, most of them, they're good doctors, but they are told. I used to be in HMO. We're told, you don't do this or this or this or this. We don't have money for that. And that is a problem. And HMO costs the same like us, like regular insurance now anyway. So I suggest for anybody who has HMO to leave it and get private insurance, the same number. Blue Cross Blue Shield costs the same exactly like HMO. Okay, but you never see a patient with high cholesterol or high blood pressure. Then you stay with the HMO. <laughs> 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 okay. All right. We're going to go to the gist of it right here. Yes, sir. Yes, absolutely. Lysosome is excellent against cholesterol. You're right about that. I forgot to mention that. Maybe your wife told you to say it next year. <laughs> okay. Yes. There are simple diagnoses and complex diagnoses. Well, you can ask your doctor to do the test. And the tests are basic tests. There are some tests that autoimmune di disease tests you can do. And they are, they run about six, seven hundred dollars, the basic test. Or you can go extensively and see the organs damage in the body and that costs lots of more money. I think if you know at least the basic, how is the body doing, better than nothing. After all, you spend more on the fixing the transmission the engine of your car than you spend on an autoimmune disease. And you, you don't have insurance on that. See, we pay more money to the insurance company we never see it back. In the meantime, we pay more money fixing the heater and this and that unnecessary stuff even in the house, painting, decorating, all of that, than we do for our own health. You have to remember your health has to be number one. And everything number two. I will go to the lady next slide. Well, it is a spasm like arterial spasm. I think you have to 
this is a difficult question because this is spasm like angina. Uh, we have to know if it, it's the primary spasm or secondary or tertiary spasm. Uh, tertiary, it brings the foot from down up. Primary, bring it from up down. Secondary, from up down down up, and they get knotted in the middle. So you ask a different question, difficult question for me as an internist. I have to know exactly which is spasm. But in general, calcium supplements are the best antispasmatic supplements. Okay? Yeah, the lady in the middle right there. Fibrocytes, autoimmune disease of the muscles. Yes. Yes, ma'am, in the back. Intolerance. Yeah. Uh, that can be cured easy because lactose intolerance, it happens in the people of Mediterranean origin. All the people are in the Mediterranean basin. Us in Egypt or the Lebanese people or the Turkish or the Greek or the Italians or the Spanish or all of those, for some reason, we all have lactose intolerance. And when we challenge the body with a small quantity of milk, gradually and build it up, it, you develop lactase enzyme easy, and enzymes are easy to build. Very rarely you're going to find somebody with lactose intolerance that is inherited. Very rare. I think, uh, I think you can build it back. The bowels are very amazing. Give it enough fibers, enough good food, be gentle on it. Like if it's irritated, the load it will stop. Take it easy with it, and it will give you better results. I don't know. I think I, think I need, we need more study on that. We ha I have not seen a research being done on lactase, lactase intolerance. Uh, lactase deficiency causes lactose intolerance as immune disease. But uh, it's possible. It could be. Yes, ma'am, right here. I miss you. Okay, that, she, you, the lady mentioned here something very important. Very not disease. That when your hands get cold and outside in the winter gets very white and cold, that's a very, very significant autoimmune disease. Very common in women than men. And especially somebody who smokes cigarettes or exposed to, 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 uh, to nicotine. Uh, I think that if we correct the thyroid hormone, and the progesterone hormone in that woman, in this woman, I think the the problem will improve. Renal disease is proof of autoimmune disease, and it can be improved with hormonal uh, management. But treating it with uh, with this management here, it doesn't need it. it. You don't have to treat it that way. Scleroderma. Uh, scleroderma is basically dryness. Everything gets dry. You know, the mouth gets to dry, the smaller, the skin gets to dry, the intestine gets to dry. And uh, I don't have a lot of success with scleroderma. I have more success with other, other autoimmune diseases. But if I have a scleroderma patient, I will definitely use this approach and use maybe a kind of mild chemotherapy to inhibit the immune system because they just don't respond to the other treatments. Okay, we, well, we're not going to go to the front. The, in the back. Uh, it is more than that, actually. Uh, these are just the main ones. You, the best way to start on vitamins, start with one tablet a day of each. And see how well your intestine tolerates them and then build it up according to which one you need more. For autoimmune disease, you need more CBNE, then add, increase those, and don't increase the others. When we talk about hormones, you're going to see that this formula changes because we need more calcium and EPA and lecithin when we talk about hormones. 
So it is not only those vitamins you have to worry about. You have to take smaller quantity of vitamins, many of them in a small quantity, much better than large quantity and a few of them. Are you following me? Okay. So it is better to take one C, one E, one B, one calcium, one formula one, one alpha alpha, one zinc, one whatever, and just increase the one you need rather than saying, I'm taking three of this and none of that. For arthritis, alpha alpha is number one, and uh, when we talk about hormones, it's going to be calcium number one. And there is another lady right here with the red dress. I think you raised your hand, right? Yes. Vaccination. Vaccination, it has a double-edged sword. If it is a killer disease like polio and measles, and that, I would go along with vaccination. If it is diseases like hepatitis, and everybody who works in a hospital has to get hepatitis, I will never get hepatitis vaccine out of these vaccines because whatever they tell us these vaccines are safe, turn out to be unsafe. If you remember the swine flu vaccine, they said everyone has to have a swine flu vaccine. And that's, that time was 1975, 1975, 76. And I used to give lecture. I went to Grand Junction, Colorado to lecture that day, and I, they convinced me you have to have a swine flu, everyone. I, I went to tell the people in lecture, you've got to have it, because I thought that's what. And then a month later, we have Guillain-Barre syndrome. People developed problems from it, and I felt so bad that I believed what my professor told me. And from now on, I, don't, I, don't, I use my own mind rather than their mind. Thank you very much, and you have a good night. Uh, one more announcement. One more announcement I want to tell you. If you like to be informed, before you leave the room, please, if you like to leave, be informed about the future lectures, put your name on a piece of paper and phone number. Just name and phone, and give it to somebody in the front, and they get in touch with you, because we have limited capacity in this room, and then future lectures, we may have more people. One other announcement, Dr. is talking about the next lecture being in November. He was off by one day. It's going to be December 1st. It's a Tuesday. December 1st. December 1st.